Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Balfat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely with the Ambassador of Japan to Bahrain, Hideki Ito, to mark the end of the Ambassador's service in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of bilateral ties between Bahrain and Japan and the importance of further advancing cooperation across various sectors. He commended the Ambassador's efforts in furthering Bahraini-Japanese relations and wished him every success in his future endeavours. Regional and international issues of common interest were also discussed. For his part, Ambassador Ito expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Prime Prince and Prime Minister, highlighting the support received by His Royal Highness during his time in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Representatives Council, chaired by Speaker Fawziya Zainal, held its weekly meeting. The Council reviewed a message by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, regarding a draft law amending some provisions of 345 of the Commercial Companies Law, promulgated by Decree Law No. 21 of 2001. The Council approved and referred to the Shura Council a draft law on the accession of the Kingdom to the Minamata Convention on Mercury. The Kingdom of Bahrain expressed support for the kind initiative announced by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on seizing fire in Yemen under the supervision of the United Nations in order to reach a political solution to the Yemeni crisis. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs looks at Saudi Arabia's initiative as emanating from its keenness to stop the bloodshed and suffering of the badly Yemeni people and in support of the efforts of the UN and American envoys to Yemen to help them reach a comprehensive political solution solution in accordance with the internationally approved terms of reference represented in the GCC initiative and the outcomes of the Comprehensive National Dialogue Conference and UN Security Council Resolution 2216. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs commends the honorable Saudi positions in support of Yemen, notably its constant endeavors to restore security and stability and its humanitarian assistance to alleviate the suffering of the Yemeni people. It also expressed hope that the Saudi initiative would receive support and welcome from all Yemeni parties and the international community in order to end the war, restore peace and security in Yemen and achieve the aspirations of the broadly Yemeni people for reconstruction, development and prosperity. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirms Bahrain's pride in and appreciation for the essential role Saudi Arabia plays in maintaining regional security, peace and stability and protecting global interests in this vital strategic region. The president of the Bahrain Football Association, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received the president of the Syrian Federation for Football, Hatim Al Ghaib, upon his visit to the kingdom on the sidelines of the match between Bahrain and Syria. During the meeting, they discussed a number of topics of mutual interest and means of enhancing cooperation in the sports field, especially the development of football and achieving positive gains for both countries through the cooperation the federations. For his part, the president the president of the Syrian Federation affirmed his keenness to bolster cooperation with the Bahraini Federation through the exchange of expertise, visits and organization of friendly international matches. He also reviewed the facilities and support projects of the Bahraini Federation and viewed the Open Amateur League in addition to the training of the first Syrian national team. The Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication, represented by the Meteorological Directorate, is joining the world in celebrating the World Meteorological Day, which takes place on the 23rd of March every year, to commemorate the establishment of the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, in 1950. The organization chose to celebrate the event this year under the theme, The Ocean, Our Climate and Weather, to showcase connection between the oceans, climate and weather in the Earth system. To speak more about the matter, we are joined by the Chief of Operations and Observation at the Meteorological Directorate, Mr. Khalid Yassin. Hello, Mr. Khalid. Now, Mr. Khalid, marking World Meteorological Day and this year's theme, tell us more about the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain in further developing its systems in this regard. Hey, good evening, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to be your guest this evening. 
Uh, going back to what you have mentioned, the World Meteorological Day, I think this day is very important in the life of all scientists and all who work in the field of meteorology all around the world. Uh, because this day, I can say, it highlights the importance of their services, uh, which is provided around the clock to different sectors, for example, aviation, marine, uh, military sectors, or uh, even we can say for the ordinary people who use the weather information in their daily life. Uh, as you have mentioned, that the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, has assigned the 23rd of March uh, of every year to celebrate the World Meteorological Day. Actually, WMO chose that date precisely to commemorate the coming into force, the convention establishing the World Meteorological Organization uh, 71 years ago today in 1950. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sorry. And every day, or oh, sorry, on every year, uh, WMO choose a different theme that reflects tropical weather, climate, or weather-related or water-related issues. Uh, this year, as you have mentioned, for 2021, the theme is the ocean, our climate, and weather, trying to connect the ocean, climate, and weather within the Earth system. Uh, so when we talk about the weather, most of us think that it's only about what's happening in the atmosphere. Ignoring the role of the ocean, uh, this will lead to missing a big piece uh, of the picture itself. So as all we know, uh, the water covers around 70% of the Earth's surface. That makes the ocean a major driver of the world's weather and climate. Also, 90% of the world trade is carried through the ocean, which again makes the ocean uh, the major driver of the global economy. Mm -hmm. And we can say that the growing impacts of climate change today are making ocean observations, research, and services more critical than ever before. Uh, in this regard, we find that the Kingdom of Bahrain has paid attention to meteorological services since the beginning of the last century. Uh, as the, <clears throat> as the, thing, uh, the Kingdom is considered one of the richest countries in weather data, which goes back to 1902, and due to the direct link and impact of the weather, we can say, for example, for the citizens uh, with their daily life, the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications has provided great support and assistance over the past years to develop and modernize the meteorological services in the kingdom. In line with the changes in meteorological services and study. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and that was the Chief of Operations and Observation at the Meteorological Directorate, Mr. Khalid Yassin. Thank you very much for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 428,240 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 238,915 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And now we are joined by the Chief of the Disease Control Section at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Adil Sayyad, to speak on and about the importance of receiving the vaccine. Hello, Dr. Adil. What is your advice on how to enhance the mitigation of the virus? Hello, good evening. Good evening for everybody. Actually, I just want to start by uh, emphasizing the importance of uh, abiding by the preventive measures that we are always, since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, concentrating on, you know, the social distancing, wearing masks and uh, washing hands. These are the most important and they will continue to be the most important uh, preventive measures to, you know, combat the, the pandemic, the virus. Uh, unfortunately, in the last few weeks, we noticed uh, the increase in number of cases, and this has been observed by everybody. We reached up to 800 one day. And this is because of uh, mainly the, the, uh, the mixing, the social uh, gathering, and the family gathering. So to start with, I want to emphasize on the importance of uh, following the preventive measures, Mask, uh, wearing masks, uh, you know, uh, avoiding uh, social and family gathering and washing hands. Mm -hmm. 
And can you elaborate on the importance of receiving the COVID-19 vaccine? Well, uh, th this is very important because, uh, you know, the, the other main um, way of preventing the disease is vaccination. And it is the, let me say, the ultimate uh, tool. So it is very important for everybody, especially older people and those with high risk to to go and take the vaccine. And I just want to emphasize on one point here also that whatever the type of vaccine, all of them are excellent in preventing the disease itself and preventing the severe disease. Almost 100%, all of them are preventing the severe cases. So even because there are a lot of talks about this is the Pfizer is better than Moderna is better than Sinopharm, all of them, all the available vaccines here in Bahrain are excellent in preventing the disease, preventing the severe cases of disease. So the, the advice here is for all to go as, as soon as they can to take the vaccine, the available vaccine, because all of them will do good for themselves and good for the community. Yes, I am sure. And that was the Chief of Disease Control Section at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Adil Sayyad. Thank you very much for joining us. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,997 with 808 recoveries, 759 registered new cases and one death. 278 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 469 are contacts of active cases and 12 are travel-related. The deceased was a 72-year-old male citizen. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.